Hi Social Media, um, bringing you a different type of story today. This is a video I've been planning on doing for a few months now. I'm a little nervous. Um, admittedly, it's going to be on the longer end. It would be a gift for me for you to watch the whole thing. And in this case, what's most important is that I say my piece and I put it out there. Um, I don't know if any of you saw the Paris Hilton documentary, um, but in it, she describes her journey through the troubled teen industry, um, through different boarding schools, wilderness programs, treatment centers, and it brought to light this industry. And I am also a survivor of this industry, and this is a story that I have never broadly shared before. And I'm going to tell my whole story. I was a rebellious child. My parents decided to send me to the King George School, an emotional growth boarding school in Vermont. It was a SEDU school. SEDU was a company founded by members of the cult Cyanon, who owned and operated several therapeutic boarding schools and behavioral modification programs. Before its bankruptcy, the company's schools faced numerous allegations of abuse. And here is my story. When I was taken to the school, I wasn't fully informed of what it was. I was told it was an art school and that I was going to be able to dance. Yes, they had dance classes in the name of art therapy, but that was not the full picture of what the school was. When I arrived, they started going through my bags in front of me. I didn't understand why I could only choose five CDs to keep so much for an arts therapeutic boarding school promoting music, or why they took away the condoms that, while I was a virgin at the time, my stepmom graciously gifted to me so I was prepared when I was ready. I was then strip searched naked and had to jump up and down and cough before being allowed in any other building. The first few days when kids asked me, why are you here? I answered, for school? I literally had to figure out what this school was all about by putting the pieces together. I've blocked out so many memories from the experience and I wish I could bring them back to fully paint the picture of my life there. Maybe from continuing to do this work, they will come back for better or for worse. The biggest trauma from the high school was simply having my basic rights taken away in little ways on a daily basis. Absolutely no physical touch was allowed. So either we were deprived of that need or we'd sneak into the cubby room and have a third watch out for us. All phone calls to parents were listened to and monitored by staff. So we felt like prisoners who could not speak out against our experience. There were no phone calls allowed to friends. All incoming and outgoing mail was read and any information negative about the school in outgoing mail or triggering to us in incoming mail was blacked out. I received pieces of mail from friends where I could only see their intro and sign off. Everything else was blacked out. Not that I looked down on my friends that I made at that school at all, but it was very traumatic. When my closest high school friends would casually tell stories about sleeping around for drug money, when I hadn't even drank alcohol, it was normal to be sitting in class and just seeing someone run down the hall screaming and banging her head against the wall or threatening to self-mutilate. The students at the school ranged from my parents don't really know how to parent to drug addicts to serious mental health disorders. And to be clear, none of our staff had therapeutic or social work credentials or even backgrounds. It was just the highest paying job in town to make this clear, one of our biggest activities was called wraps. Twice daily, we would sit in a circle and talk about what was going on at the school. Mostly it was to call people out for not staying in code. In one particular wrap, uh, the night before, a bunch of girls were sitting around and talking about my best friend Zoe, gossiping, not nice, but as girls do. Instead of just letting that blow over in the wrap the next day. The counselors decided the best way to handle this was to have 
Each girl go around the circle and share directly to Zoe what they don't like about her. Imagine a teenage girl and how traumatic that is. Academics at the school were a complete joke. The dance program that I was there for, complete joke. They, uh, uh, there was a dance teacher that they hired that actively told students that being gay was not okay. Again, teenagers, formative years, figuring out who they are, being told that they are not okay. I actually invited that dance teacher to a presentation in my debate class about gay marriage. She was not into it. They had people going up on point before they were actually strong enough. I saw massive injuries take place in the dance studio. Then when, when our dance teachers quit and they didn't have anyone to teach the classes, they approached me and asked me to be the dance teacher of my own school. They took me out of art history class, said they'd give me a certain grade, and I taught my friends dance. And this was for parents paying money for these students to be studying dance. I didn't get to explore with rebellion, a developmental experience for teenagers. I'd never been to a house party or a normal prom. And after a few months of being at the school, they decided I was still too rebellious. And that the reason that I wasn't doing well was because I didn't go to a wilderness program before boarding school. They told my parents that the only way they would allow me to stay at the school was if I left, went to wilderness program, and then came back. But of course, what wilderness program were they pushing on my parents? Ascent, also a CDU school owned by the same company as my high school. You will see in an upcoming documentary, Teens for Profit, how all of this money is wrapped up with each other. It's sick. The worst was when I went to wilderness. At the program, I was physically and emotionally abused. We did an exercise one day where we had to present to our group every bad thing that we had done and every major trauma or milestone that we went through. I presented my life story and then was asked to step outside. While I was outside, my group discussed my presentation and when I returned, they told me that together, they decided I had not shared enough and I was to be punished. I was literally punished because I did not have the same kind of stories that they did. What was my punishment? I was forced to wear an orange vest all day. I was forced to sleep outside, not in a tent. I was not allowed to talk to any person other than staff members for two weeks. My group could sit together during meals and breaks and talk and I had to sit separate. I had to always be last in line and last to be served a meal. On Christmas, after hiking for two weeks in the wilderness, we stopped at a lodge and they gave everyone a special meal inside with a fire. But I was forced to sit outside on the front porch, listening to everyone giggle and having this special night. I was not included and I was to eat rice and beans for the 16th day in a row. I was not given the things, the, excuse me, Christmas meal. On one day, when we were hiking, I had peed my pants while snowshoeing because I was not allowed to go to the bathroom. The control of our bladder and bowel movements was a thing that they did often. Once I had to sign a petition or I had to get a petition signed by six staff members to allow me to go to the bathroom. Anyway, on this particular day, when we got to the campsite, I wanted to quickly set up my tent so I could change. They told me I had not drank enough water that day and I could not set up my tent until I had done so. They forced me to chug four full Nalgene water bottles in front of them. It was too much water for my body to handle and I began to puke. They told me I had to keep drinking if I wanted to set up my tent. So I continued to chug water, puke it up and sit in my wet underwear while they watched and giggled. One time back at base camp, we had an exercise where we had to carry all of the trash from one location to another a mile and a half away. 
We were about six people and we had to stand in line with exactly five feet between each of us. If we took one step too close to the person in front of us, we had to start back at the beginning. If we had a lag, a gap of just one step, we had to go back to the beginning. This took all day. And five hours in, my knee, which I had a medical condition, was starting to bother me. I went to the nurse, she looked at it, she said, absolutely, you should not be going back to that activity, but I am not allowed to say that. So unfortunately, you need to go back. And I continued with the activity with my swollen knee. After six weeks of the wilderness, I was back at boarding school. And a few months into that, SIDU went bankrupt and my school was sold to Universal Health Services, a Fortune 500 company that provides healthcare services and hospitals. They referred to us as patients and they started to make policy changes at the school to be more like, like a hospital. I thought I was there for high school. When I graduated after two years of being at the school, I received so many awards. Yes, it felt incredible that I was the first person ever to complete the program in its entirety, but why was I the first person ever to complete the program in its entirety? Even as I was graduating and afterward, those experiences had such an impact on me. When I was looking at colleges, I had a dream. I wanted to go to University of Miami. This is where I meant to be. But I was told by the school that I would not do well there. I needed to be coddled. I needed to go to a small school with special education programs. I was told that I was not a normal kid. And instead, I went to Goucher College, a small liberal arts school, which I did love, but I would have wanted a large state school. And when I got out, I only had younger friends because my emotional growth was stunted. I didn't know how to be friends with people my age. I wasn't cool. So I bonded with people three, four, five, six years younger than me. This is who I spent time with. I have so much shame about what happened to me at that school and that wilderness program. And believe me, I have so much shame that I even got sent there in the first place. And I hid it for years. I felt like there was something wrong with me that I'd, I'd when I would tell people about it, I'd almost come out like, I need to tell you this big secret that I'm holding. And I still have shame to be honest. I'm scared you're all going to think that there was something wrong with me to have me sent there in the first place. But really, that's because that's the story I've held on to for so long, that there's something wrong with me. I have spent years trying to break that story and I am getting there. The Breaking Code Silence movement has pushed me and given me permission to, to start this story, to share my story in a way that I have never done before. And it's so clear that now I need to speak up. As Breaking Code Silence always asks survivors, what did the programs give you? My programs gave me anxiety, OCD, abandonment issues, PTSD, self-doubt, a scarcity context, nightmares, attachment issues, and codependence. Even if I was the most messed up kid in the world, no child, no matter what, deserves that abuse. 